The United States' role is what really pisses me off here. Our role in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is about as toxic as Flint, Michigan's water. The Biden administration said, hold my beer, IDF. I'm going to go ahead and fan the flames even more. Okay, if Israel was our friend and our friend was an alcoholic, we're giving them Everclear. The Biden administration said, how do I stark and sow the seeds of conflict even more? I'm going to give the Israeli military $735 million in weapons. $735 million. That doesn't seem like you're trying to support peace. Now, does it? Especially when these are the individuals who had originally started the conflict. On top of that, the rest of the international community said, hold on a second here, U.S. It seems like you have your head in the sand pit full of hell. Maybe we shouldn't do this and let's have a U.N. resolution to be able to stop them. Well, the United States said, hold my secondary beer, son. I don't think so. The United States is on the Security Council permanently. What that means is that the United States can veto any UN resolution that it sees fit for the rest of eternity. And I mean, like, literally. Literally, that's what it is. It was created after World War II. It was created to get the all the countries to, to come together and to form some sort of a union. They couldn't get the most powerful countries together unless they had some sort of advantage over the smaller countries, thus creating the Security Council. There are some members that kind of rotate through, so, like, they're only on there for a certain amount of time, but there are some that are inevitably there forever, like the United States. So the United States says, you know what? I, I don't think so, son. We're going to go ahead and veto this three times in a week. And the response to this was that the United States said, well, we're, we're, we're working on a situation with the Palestine, or excuse me, the Israeli government to be able to stop the conflict where we have this this whole idea behind the scenes that we're going to work on in order to help the situation. Well, their masterminded idea was for Biden, and I don't mean to do low blows, but let's be real here. I'm not sure if he even remembered that he was making the call in real time, but maybe that was a low blow. I'm going to I'm not I'm not going to do that for the rest of the podcast. I don't want that to delegitimize my the rest of what I'm saying. <laughs> but Biden talked to Netanyahu and he had said uh, that Netanyahu should have a ceasefire with the Palestinians. However, if the ceasefire does not happen, that the United States is not going to be responding in any sort of retaliatory way against the Palestinians, or excuse me, the Israelis. So the Israeli government can take it or leave it, and that's it, done. I know there's going to be people to say, well, there is a ceasefire. Ah, well, it, ceasefire is a loose term, especially when there isn't really a ceasefire going on. But anyway... To further put the U.S.'s role into perspective, in 2019, we gave $3.3 billion to Israel, and this is according to USA, the official U.S. body, the governmental body. In addition to that, while everybody's waiting for their stimulus checks in 2020, the U.S. government decided to still give $5.3 million to the Israeli government. So we're all waiting for our stimulus checks, and they're like, hey, Israel, here you go, and they just sprinkle it all in there. Isn't that kind of a slap to the face, right? By the way, I'm still stuck on this analogy I said earlier. Flint, Flint, Michigan still doesn't have water. So, like, what could that have done for them, right? On top of all this stuff, pro-Israel individuals and organizations gave $33 million in election campaign donations in 2020. Biden got $3.2 million of that. It's not really any sort of surprise as to why Biden's taking the stance that he is.